Imagine this. Your height isn't just a random number on a measuring tape. It's a chapter in the epic saga of human evolution. From the towering giants of Homo erectus to the pint-sized Homo floresiensis, our ancestors adapted their sizes to conquer diverse environments all over the globe. But this raises some provocative questions. How has our height evolved alongside our ever-changing lifestyles? Will our future be marked by towering heights, or could we see a return to shorter statures? And just how much does our environment shape who we are today? Get ready to join us on a thrilling journey as we unravel the mysteries of human height and uncover what it truly means for our future. To truly understand how our height lost its uniformity, we first have to trace it all the way back to our ancestors and see how height played a role in their evolution and the mass effects it had as it changed over millions of years. See, over millions of years, height fluctuated as hominins adapted to different climates, diets, and survival challenges. It's interesting to note that early humans were generally shorter as they balanced life between the trees and the ground, while later species became taller to adapt to new ways of life on open plains. If we took a short trip to between 4.18 and 2 million years ago, we would find ourselves face to face with the Australopithecans, a group of early bipedal hominins. These ancient humans were not particularly tall, as the average height ranged from 3.5 to 5 feet or 1 to 1.5 meters. But why? Well, to put it simply, their small size was ideal for their partially arboreal lifestyle, and they still relied heavily on climbing trees for food and protection. Basically, being shorter made it easier for them to maneuver through the trees and hide from predators, not to mention their gradual adaptation to walking upright on the ground did not yet demand taller statures. At its core, their short height was an asset in their environment. But this would soon change as bipedalism became more central to their survival. With the appearance of Homo habilis about 2.3 to 1.65 million years ago, we see a similar stature, with an average height of 3.5 to 4.5 feet, or 1 to 1.4 meters. This species was among the first to exhibit increased brain size and advanced tool use, yet their shorter height reflected something different. It showed that upon all their growth, their adaptation to environments was still centered on climbing and small group hunting. At this stage, height did not play a crucial role in long-distance travel or endurance hunting. In fact, smaller body sizes may have allowed them to thrive on fewer resources as they scavenged and hunted in small territories. Things would not stay the same for long, as a significant leap in height occurred with Homo erectus. Walking the Earth about 1.9 million to 110,000 years ago, the Homo erectus had an average height of 5 to 6 feet, or 1.5 to 1.8 meters. This species marked a major shift in human evolution, being one of the first to leave Africa and spread across Asia and Europe. Their taller height was a response to new environmental demands, as Homo erectus adapted to life in open savannas and woodlands, where endurance and long-distance travel were crucial for hunting and survival. Here, a taller stature enabled them to walk and run efficiently over long distances, conserve energy, and even stay cool in hot climates. This period was the turning point where height became essential for hunting, foraging, and migration. Following Homo erectus, the next species we encounter is Homo heidelbergensis, who lived around 700,000 to 200,000 years ago, a tall, robust species with an average height between 5.6 and 6 feet, or 1.7 to 1.83 meters. This species lived in colder climates and hunted large game. They were especially good at this because their tall, muscular builds were well suited to these environments. During their time, Height became an advantage in endurance-based hunting strategies, where persistence hunting required following prey over long distances. Additionally, their taller height helped them conserve heat in colder regions, which is necessary for survival in harsh conditions. Homo heidelbergensis today is thought to be a common ancestor of both modern humans and Neanderthals, and their height definitely helped shape the adaptability of future hominins. The Neanderthals, who lived around 400,000 to 40,000 years ago, present an interesting case, as they were shorter and stockier compared to their ancestors. But why did the evolution of height go backwards? Well, averaging 5.4 to 5.7 feet, 
or 1.64 to 1.74 meters, the Neanderthals were adapted to colder European climates. This means that their shorter, more compact bodies helped them retain heat in frigid environments, while their muscular builds made them physically strong. This, by the way, was a necessity for hunting large animals up close. Now, while their height was shorter relative to other species like Homo erectus, their strength and body mass compensated for this, making them formidable hunters in cold, harsh environments. Fast forward a few years, and we come face to face with the Homo sapiens, aka modern humans. Emerging around 300,000 years ago in Africa, early Homo sapiens likely had an average height of around 5.5 to 6 feet, or 1.65 to 1.83 meters similar to today's modern populations. However, unlike previous species, the height of modern humans presented something much different, as it was more influenced by culture, nutrition, and health advancements than purely evolutionary pressures. For example, during periods of food scarcity or malnutrition, populations tended to be shorter, as seen in some hunter-gatherer and early agricultural societies. On the other hand, the Industrial Revolution and improved access to food and healthcare have generally led to increases in height in the last century, something we will look at shortly. Throughout this evolutionary journey, Homo erectus can be considered one of the tallest species, with heights averaging 5 to 6 feet, which allowed for efficient long-distance travel and adaptability to various environments. In contrast, Australopithecus afarensis, standing at approximately 3.5 to 5 feet, represents one of the shortest early hominins, optimized for a life that balanced arboreal and terrestrial activities. In today's world, our height isn't just shaped by evolution anymore. It's influenced by a whole new set of factors. So, what really makes you as tall or short as you are now? Let's uncover the surprising secrets behind your height in the modern era. So, what exactly determines how tall you are now? And why do we all stand at such different heights? Let's dive into the factors behind what makes you as tall or short as you are today. Quick pause. If you're enjoying this journey through the prehistoric world, don't forget to like and subscribe. More than 97% of our viewers watch without subscribing, and we'd love to have you join our tribe. It would make all the difference. So, is it done? Great, thanks a ton. According to studies, the average human is about 5 feet 9 inches worldwide. However, when it comes to human height, there is something extremely peculiar we find when we look at the variation across many people. Despite being the same species, humans display one of the most intense forms of height variation in the entire animal kingdom. See, for other animals, there's a lot at play, like species and breed variations, sexual dimorphism, and individual variation. While these cause changes in height in the animals, it is far more subtle and height is often more consistent within a given species or breed. Essentially, a German shepherd in North America is most likely the same height as another German shepherd of the same species from another part of the world, say Australia. This is not the same for humans. In fact, even in the same region, humans of the same ethnicity, race, and even ancestry show one of the most diverse height fluctuations seen on the planet. You don't even need to look far. Just look at your friends, family, and neighbors, and the clear distinction is all around you. But let's look worldwide so you get a bigger picture. In Europe, the Dutch lead as the tallest, with men standing on average at about 6 feet or 183 centimeters, and women at 5 feet 7 inches or 170 centimeters. In North America, US men average 5 feet 9 inches or 175 centimeters, and women 5 feet 4 inches or 163 centimeters, similar to Canada. Across Asia, Southeast Asians are shorter, with Indonesian men around 5 feet 4 inches or 163 centimeters, while East Asians, like the Chinese, have seen a rise to 5 feet 7 inches or 170 centimeters for men. Things get even more interesting when we look into Africa. For some reason, the sub Saharan populations show great variation, with Sudanese men averaging 6 feet 2 inches or 188 centimeters, while Nigerian men average 5 feet 7 inches or 170 centimeters. In South America, Brazilians are around 5 feet 8 inches or 173 centimeters, while Andean populations are shorter. In Oceania, Australians average 5 feet 10 inches 
or 178 centimeters, and Polynesians are notably tall at around 5 feet 11 inches, or 180 centimeters. Moving to the Middle East, countries like Turkey and Iran have average heights around 5 feet 8 inches, or 173 centimeters for men, and 5 feet 4 inches, or 162 centimeters for women. But what exactly is the reason behind this uneven growth rate? What if I told you that even today, human height continues to evolve according to the situation we find ourselves in? It might seem subtle at first, but environmental factors play a huge role in influencing height throughout human evolution. But what exactly shaped the way our ancestors grew? And how did different environments leave their mark? Well, in no small way, climate, food availability, and living conditions all had a direct impact on how we adapted. And height was a key part of that story. Take colder climates, for instance, and how they favored shorter, stockier builds. The Neanderthals thrived in freezing European environments with their compact bodies, conserving heat and allowing them to survive the ice-cold conditions. On the flip side, in warmer regions like Africa, where Homo erectus roamed, they had taller, leaner frames as an advantage. Essentially, one key part of height was all about staying cool and covering long distances to find food and water. Speaking of food, its availability also played a massive role in shaping human height. See, when there was plenty to eat, populations could reach their full height potential. But what happened when food was scarce? Then it goes the other way, as malnutrition stunts growth, leaving populations shorter and weaker. It is here that modern humans tipped the scale and pushed out evolutionary pressure. See, the real turning point came with the shift to agriculture about 10,000 years ago. You would think that agriculture would make us grow taller for the increase in food, but history presents us with a riveting mystery. Why did early farming communities suddenly start shrinking compared to their hunter-gatherer ancestors? It turns out that relying on just a few crops for survival came at a cost. Unlike the varied and nutrient-packed diet of hunter-gatherers, early farmers mostly ate grains that lacked essential vitamins and minerals. With a diet like this, how could their growth not have been affected? And it wasn't just about the food, because with farming came permanent settlements that would do more damage to our height. But how did living in close quarters change things? The simple answer is disease. Much like a cold virus and most other diseases, close quarters living allowed diseases to spread more easily, weakening immune systems and compounding the effects of poor nutrition. So, while we might think of agriculture as a major step forward, it very much could have been a step back for our health and height. The way we lived and what we ate became more important than ever shaping not just our bodies, but the future of human height. But not everything can be traced back to the environment. As within us, genetics still played a key role. A role that quite literally starts from the first humans. On a broad scale, the genetics of height is a fascinating intersection of nature, nurture, and our evolutionary past. As you already know, height is a highly heritable trait, with genetics playing a substantial role in determining how tall or short, someone will be. But it's not just a simple inheritance from parents, as we thought. See, height is influenced by the interaction of hundreds of genes, environmental factors, and ancestral adaptations that have evolved over millennia. Research has identified over 700 genetic variants linked to height, which interact in complex ways. These genes are involved in processes like bone growth, cartilage development, and hormonal regulation. Interestingly, no single gene determines height. Rather, it's the cumulative effect of these multiple genes that decides the final outcome. This means two parents of average height could still have a very tall or very short child, depending on how these genetic variations are combined and expressed. Height inheritance is what we call polygenic, meaning it's controlled by many genes. Some of these genes are involved in the growth plates of long bones, while others influence growth hormones. Certain genes can even affect how efficiently the body absorbs nutrients, which in turn affects how much growth potential is reached. And while genetics provides the foundation for how tall someone can grow, external factors such as nutrition, physical activity, and health play a significant role in whether that potential is fully realized. But how do they work hand in hand? If you've ever noticed that people from different parts of the world tend to have distinct average heights, you're seeing the impact of both genetics and environmental adaptation at play. 
Regional variations in height can be traced back to the specific genetic makeup and historical conditions of populations. These differences didn't just happen overnight. They are the product of long-term adaptations to the environments in which various human groups lived. For instance, populations in Northern Europe, particularly in the Netherlands and Scandinavian countries, tend to be taller on average. The Dutch, for example, are currently the tallest people in the world, with men averaging around 6 feet or 1.83 meters tall. This is likely a combination of genetic predispositions toward greater height, combined with modern factors like excellent nutrition and healthcare. Their ancestors, who lived in environments with ample food supplies and relatively stable climates, didn't face the same nutritional deficiencies as populations in harsher environments, allowing their genetic height potential to flourish. In contrast, populations in parts of Southeast Asia and Central America are often shorter. Historically, people in these regions have faced more nutritional challenges, disease, and other environmental pressures that likely influence their overall growth. For instance, the pygmy populations of Central Africa are among the shortest in the world, with adult men averaging around 4.9 feet or 1.49 meters in height. Their shorter stature is thought to be an evolutionary adaptation to the dense rainforest environments they live in, where small size might be an advantage for maneuvering through thick vegetation and conserving energy in resource-scarce regions. But how did these regional differences evolve? The answer lies in our ancestors. See, our ancestors lived in vastly different environments, and their bodies adapted to the challenges of survival in those areas. Over time, these adaptations were passed down through generations, influencing the height of their descendants. For instance, Homo erectus, one of our earliest ancestors, stood relatively tall compared to other species, often reaching heights of around 5 to 6 feet. This was likely an adaptation to their need for long-distance endurance hunting in the open savannas of Africa. A taller frame allowed for efficient walking and running over great distances, helping them track and hunt prey. As some of these early humans migrated to other regions with different environmental pressures, their bodies adapted accordingly. In colder climates, like those experienced by Neanderthals in Europe, shorter, stockier frames were favored because they helped conserve body heat. Short limbs and a robust body meant less surface area to lose heat, a crucial adaptation for surviving in Ice Age environments. These traits were passed down to their descendants, contributing to the shorter average heights seen in some modern populations living in colder regions today. Then there's the curious case of Homo floresiensis, often referred to as the Hobbit. Discovered on the Indonesian island of Flores, these early humans stood just about 3.5 feet tall, but why so short? It's believed that their small stature was an adaptation to island life, where resources were limited, a phenomenon known as island dwarfism. This evolutionary trait, seen in many animal species as well, likely helped them survive with fewer resources, giving us a good example of how environmental pressures can drastically shape height. When humans shifted from being nomadic hunter-gatherers to settled agricultural societies around 10,000 years ago, a new set of pressures influenced height. So, whether tall or short, our ancestors' heights were closely tied to the environments they lived in and the resources they had at their disposal. These evolutionary adaptations were essential for survival and continue to echo through our genetic makeup today. It's important to note, however, that height is not just the result of genetic drift or random variation. See, natural selection has played a crucial role in shaping the height of different populations. In environments where tall stature provided an advantage, whether for hunting, fighting, or attracting mates, taller individuals were more likely to survive and reproduce, passing their genes onto the next generation. On the other hand, in environments where short stature offered better survival odds, shorter individuals thrived. For example, in certain African populations, Height has remained relatively high due to the benefits of tall stature for heat dissipation and endurance in hot, arid environments. This is why some groups, like the Nilotic people of Sudan and South Sudan, who have historically been pastoralists and endurance runners, are among the tallest in the world, with men often exceeding 6 feet or 1.83 meters. So what does the future hold for human height evolution? And how tall can we get? Well, that's a tricky question. While evolutionary pressures like climate, diet, and lifestyle have played major roles in shaping the height of our ancestors, 
modern humans live in an entirely different world. Global access to nutrition, advancements in healthcare, and the ability to adapt our environments with technology have dramatically changed the game. Essentially, we're no longer bound by the same limitations our ancestors faced. That said, genetic factors will always play a role. It's possible that human height could continue to increase in regions with access to better nutrition and health care. But how tall can we really get? Well, you have to know that there are biological limits to our height. Our skeletal and cardiovascular systems can only support so much. Plus, height isn't just about standing tall. It comes with trade-offs, such as increased energy demands and potential strain on the heart. Ultimately, evolution doesn't have a one-size-fits-all path. The human height will likely continue to vary depending on geography, lifestyle, and genetic factors. But for now, we've unlocked a future where environment and choice shape us as much as evolution ever did. Whether you're tall or short, you're part of a lineage that's been molded by survival, adaptation, and the ever-changing world. But what do you think? Will the future of human height be shaped more by our environment and choices than by genetics alone? Or could we be approaching the limits of how tall we can grow? Share your thoughts in the comments below.